Hello everyone, this is Eagle and welcome back to Steel Division 2. So we are finally there, we are about to finish the Soviet divisions and I can say that I am very happy about this uh, because to be honest I am not a big fan of uh, Soviet divisions. Uh, for those who know me, mostly I play uh, Axis divisions. Uh, but anyway, it has been a long journey uh, trying to explore all the Soviet divisions and review all of them. And today we are going to talk about the 7th Estonian Division, which was a Red Army formation consisted mainly from ethnic Estonians and officers. This division participated in many uh, operations such as uh, Battle of Leningrad, Veliki and the campaign of the Narva Bridgehead. The 7th Estonian Division is basically a standard rifle division and it has also standard composition of soldiers and we are going to clarify that later and the division is supported by the T-34-76 and Soviet T-26 as well as the KV-1S the division also has uh, Churchill 4 lend -Lease tanks it is also mentioned here that the division has strong air support and it can perform well in uh, defensive situations now before we go more into deep details about the 7th Estonian division let's first talk about Estonia situation during World War II so a fun fact about Estonia that the nation actually was neutral during World War II or when World War II started however that was not enough to avoid dragging this small Baltic nation into this massive conflict the story started when uh, Germany and Soviet Union signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact which was actually a non-aggression pact that divided Poland between the Soviets and the Germans. Also the same pact put Estonia under the Soviet occupation and then later Estonia was occupied by Germany uh, at the early beginning of the war and during the course of war the Soviet Union decided to create the 8th Estonian Corps which basically had ethnic Estonians uh, men. Part of the 8th Estonian Corps was the 7th Estonian Division or the 7th Estonian Rifle Division. This division was founded in 1942 and it almost had 10,000 men at that time. However, most of these men were taken uh, from labor camps against their will and they are mostly represented here in the game as the Mostad disheartened troops which we are going to uh, discuss later or show it later while we are building the division so most of what is mentioned here uh, by the game is actually uh, accurate or entirely accurate so uh, let's move on and see how uh, did we configure this division and how does it perform uh, in a battle so everyone this is the 7th ST or the 7th Estonian Rifle Division so as uh, far as my experience go with this division, this division is not bad. It is also not that good. Uh, however, it is uh, one of the most preferred divisions in case if you prefer uh, spamming. So this division has the capability of spamming uh, lots of units and lots of infantry. Uh, and we will see that now. Uh, as we can see here, I was able to make 131 infantry uh, unit you can uh, even have more or less depending on what you uh, or how you set up uh, the division uh, so let's jump in and see uh, how did we configure this so in the recon tab we have the t70 rasfitka i bought one card of these uh, in phase a and we have also uh, some uh, snipers and I added uh, this BA-20 as the transport vehicle for this. We do have uh, here some other units. But they are not that great. So that is how I configure the recon tab here. So moving to the infantry tab. And this is the tab that I wanted to talk about a little bit. So we have uh, lots of choices here 
For example, we have the Tanko Desaniki here, uh, and I put uh, one uh, card in phase A. And I believe you only have one card of, uh, from these uh, units, yeah. And then we have this uh, Luscrid or Luscrid, Luscrid, which is basically uh, a normal uh, Soviet uh, infantry, something similar to the Gavardia or to the uh, Streleki unit. And it has two uh, light machine guns, uh, DB-28, and the rest of that is uh, a bolt-action rifle. However, it has also uh, anti-tank uh, rifle. And it can be used uh, in medium to long range. So I added one card from these in Phase A. And then we have this Mustad uh, mantlet. And these units are the ones which are uh, uh, supposed to be fighting against their will, as mentioned in the division description. They have a strength of 15, and they come in really great numbers. Uh, and that is when you can spam uh, your opponent to death using these uh, uh, units, because they are first not easy uh, to die, because they have strength of 15. And second, they are uh, really uh, cheap and they come in great numbers. So this is basically the, the, the biggest strength about this division, which is basically spammy. So um, I added two cards in phase B. And then uh, I added one card from this uh, last grid in phase uh, B. Also to have uh, longer range support. And then I added two Bioneer cards in Phase B. So that we have uh, close combat also capability in Phase B. And we do have it in Phase A also. The Tanko de Saniki. And then I had uh, to add this uh, last grid uh, unit. Which has semi-automatic rifle in Phase uh, C. And then I added also one close combat uh, droid, if I get the name right, I'm not sure. Uh, which can perform well in close combat. Uh, it is something uh, similar to the Automatiki. So basically what we see here in this division is just a replica of other Soviet divisions with the changing names. Uh, not so much creative work uh, in creating this division uh, by uh, Eugene but anyway that's what we have here nothing nothing more again the the pioneered with the BBS and they have strength of four some commanders and that's it basically so I added as much as I can in this tab, uh, which provided me, as I said, with 131 units. Moving to the tank tab, which is not so great, but it's also not bad. I mean, you get to have the KV-1S, which is a good tank. And the KV-1S Komroti, I added that in phase A as well. I could have added maybe this one ah it doesn't come in phase b so that's why i added this in phase a because normally i wouldn't go and put eight tanks in in phase a so most of the kv1s only come in in uh, phase a then i added the uh, churchill uh, four in phase b which provides you with 12 tanks someone might then uh, want to add the uh, t34 76 which will help also in spamming but I'm not a big fan of spam techniques, so I didn't use the T-34, but it would be a great idea to have it as well. Uh, then we have here Flamethrower Team, which comes in Phase uh, A with 6 units. And a Maxim that I put in Phase A as well. And then we have this Support Gun, which only has e HE shells. And a commandant as well as uh, a supply truck. Nothing here uh, looks um, interesting. There is also this is Smirsh unit, which some some people use. Um, 
they come they come in good numbers as well and good availability and they have good strength uh, but to be honest, I, I had lots of infantry, so that's why I, I didn't uh, use that. Moving to the anti-tank tab, and this is the tab that you want to fill to the maximum, because uh, this division, as we can see, is not that great when it comes to armored units. So that's why I added M42 uh, 45mm. And I added one card of the F2276 millimeter and SU85, as well as two cards of the SU76 in phase B. Uh, someone might think maybe we should have added uh, BTRS, but we don't have the enough slots. But we definitely, uh, it would have been definitely a good idea. Anyway, moving to the anti air tab. I added the uh, 37 millimeter in phase A and another card in phase B. And other than this, the rest is basically silly options. Moving to the artillery, and we have good choices here in the artillery. One of them is the uh, off map artillery. However, with the current Eugene changes to the game, they made the off map artillery very expensive for no reason. Uh, I, th I think it's just overpriced they should reduce it but anyway uh, we have the uh, 120 millimeter mortar and I added one card of uh, leaders because I did not have uh, leaders in the infantry tab and then I added this F2276 millimeter as uh, artillery support in phase B we do have also the 122 uh, millimeter but it's a bit expensive compared to this one so I decided to use the 76 millimeter we do also have the Katyusha which is also a bit expensive I prefer to use the Katyusha basically uh, in 10 versus 10 or something because it would be very expensive to have this uh, unit and it also take lots of uh, ammo Moving to the air tab, and it's mentioned in the description that this uh, uh, this division has strong air support. Well, I have seen better air support tabs, to be honest, in other uh, divisions. But anyway, uh, we do have the LA-5FN, which has good speed and it also works as a fighter and a light bomber, so that's why I took it in Phase A. Uh, the fighters here are not so great. We have the LA-5FN, uh, which is um, fast plane, but also it is not that uh, good. It only has like two uh, guns in the nose. So anyway, we do have it in the uh, light bomber uh, section. So that's why I took two of the uh, two vetted, and it can be used also as a fighter. The Yak 7B here also work as a fighter, and it work as an uh, anti tank. So I took one of these in uh, phase B, and then we have the uh, this year two which is a heavy bomber basically that has 20 bombs uh, of 100 kilogram and this uh, SU-2 actually is a really good plane uh, it is a recon plane but it also uh, an anti-tank plane and the best thing about it that you can uh, at least be sure that you won't lose uh, sight of the tanks when you are trying to destroy them which is basically something very uh, ridiculous if I can say in this game that you can lose sight of a tank that is right beneath you uh, so at least with this plane you will not be able to to lose the sight this time and you can have a direct hit so that's why I took one card also in phase C and then we have this other version of the year 2 which has 3000 
kilograms of bombs. And that's like they call it the nuke planes in this game because they really have heavy payload that can uh, do big impact even against tanks. So I took another card of this in phase two. Other than this, we don't have many choices. We still have one card of the X7B and the IL-2 M3 cluster bombing uh, anti-tank. But that's basically how I configure this. And I took this division to uh, the game. Mm, someone might think that maybe I could have configured this in a different way. Uh, but uh, that's how I basically uh, build it. So let's let's jump in uh, into a battle and see how did we perform using this uh, division. So everyone, this is uh, the game. I have already started deploying my units on the left side. I'm playing uh, in red and my opponent is playing uh, in blue. So let's see how this game uh, goes. I think it's better if we take this side. Yep. So that would make me on the right side. And my opponent is on the left side of the screen. He already started deploying all uh, of his unit. My opponent here named Operation Z. So the game has started. He started right right away uh, by deploying uh, a recon plane A20. He's playing, by the way, uh, with the 126 uh, Gronostkovi corpse which we did a video about before. It's one of the good divisions. It has also some light, uh, fast light uh, armor vehicles. So I tried to push fast in the middle, trying to uh, take this uh, side. He put one uh, anti-tank here and an MG. And on this side, I am pushing uh, my units also to take that flag, supported by some uh, guns here. I'm trying to push the LA-5FN to kill his A-20 uh, Boston, his recon plane. Uh, lots of people do that to scout your troops at the start of the game, especially if they are planning a rush. But in this case, he did not rush. I was the one who was rushing. Uh, and both of us are playing balanced. Anyway, he has this uh, fast, uh, fast light tanks, the BT-7. I was able to kill his MG and also his uh, anti-tank here and I am pushing toward the uh, flag, the middle. Some gunfight here between the two Maxims. Uh, and now Operation Z is basically targeting my uh, anti-air. I did a swift push here uh, and the reason I did this is because I know that the 7th ST is not so great. It is only good in uh, spamming. So you have to do some kind of, of a bush and choke your opponent basically. He's doing some kind of uh, a risky uh, maneuver here by pushing this BT-7. I'm not sure why. I think he's trying to reach to the maybe to the anti-air. And here, I was able to secure that flag. Lots of infantry in this side. Battle is going on. 
in the center he was finally able to destroy my uh, flamethrower team however there is a bush here that I'm trying to do for this forest nothing in the south though everything is calm another A20 Boston which I am trying to kill but Operations he has already deployed his uh, anti-air the Z12 25 millimeter okay pushing to T T70 Rasfitka to counter this PT7 let's see if this is going to make a difference I think it was a mistake pushing this PT7 and it is destroyed trying to target his uh, mortal his mortar here but yeah and I lost the LA5N these anti-air are uh, pretty effective however uh, I had uh, as I said a strong bush from the start so I have 16 flag and he only has 8 so he was kind of taking by surprise So battle of mortars now, I'm trying to target the 82 millimeter using uh, my mortar because he keep trying to destroy my uh, anti-air and that means that he might have plans to strike using planes, let's see. However, he is too far uh, behind in the flags I have 16 flag and operation Z has only 8 so he need to turn this very fast okay advancing the T70 Rasfitka trying to support the infantry in the middle yes he started already using the B40N uh, has 485 kilometer it is not that fast but it deploys the payload fast and then he keeps it for some reason but now he pushed his plane back which he should have done from the start I have two anti-air deployed here this B40N to be honest looks faster than it should I mean it is breaching the anti-air and destroying my units using another one anyway uh, Operation Z was able to restore the flag in this uh, area and he's pushing now more troops I was able to kill one of uh, his mortars but he has another two so I deployed another two uh, another mortar as well so I have also two mortars lots of Gronos Terelaki here which are basically uh, long range units trying to destroy or kill my infantry big fight here the middle trying to <laughs> go and kill uh, his Grono Komroti
and large number of infantry are coming here four units but I'm not sure if these these are not good in close combat so I'm not sure why he's pushing them here okay they are fighting again at the last grid again he's marking the 37 millimeter for some reason he doesn't like this anti-air pushing the LA-5N was able to suppress some uh, of his infantry. In the south, he finally uh, started to move, trying to kill the units here. But I was able to regain control of that flag, so 15 flag to nine. Again, this plane is causing lots of damage, the B-40. Another B-40N So I guess we are looking to large spam now of uh, fighter bombers Which means that I need to put lots of uh, anti-air Big number of infantry on this side But I can say that most of these are not good for uh, close combat to be honest He's trying to keep them also on the sides, anyway. I have withdrawn my T-70 from here to here, trying to support uh, my infantry, because this Gronos Treleki are making uh, lots of uh, noise to my units here. They are pushing them back. Another B-40N. This has started to be annoying, that's why I, now I'm deploying two more anti-air units. And another B-40 incoming here as well. Not sure this time who uh, he's trying to target what exactly. Okay, so he's trying to target the BA-20. And now I'm deploying the heavy bombers, the air 2. He doesn't have enough anti-air though. And the Maxim is gone. Very heavy bomber. On the south. Nothing is going on on the center. Big battles. He's trying to push more uh, to take this flag. However, he doesn't have enough uh, close combat infantry as it seems. He is now deploying more Sabiris to be uh, able to overcome this issue. And he's doing lots of support using the M3S on all fronts. And I'm now trying to uh, push the SU-76 to counter the M3S basically. Nothing in the north as well. He's getting prepared to push more M3S to kill the T-70 Rasvitka and he's using the A-20 Boston trying to uh, reckon. So I have deployed lots of uh, anti-air but I'm not sure if this anti-air can actually do something to the B-40. Now he's spamming lots of uh, air units trying to kill my infantry here and he succeeded 
in doing so. Okay, this T70 Rasvitka is not gonna hold against the M3S for sure. The M3 is a better tank. Finally, I was able to destroy one of the B40N. Large number of infantry are advancing toward this and also he's targeting my uh, 37 millimeter here. Ah, the T-70 Rasvetka here was able to kill one of the M3S, which is a good thing. We are now in phase B. And see as this number of infantry, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine infantry units. So we are going to have big battle here, apparently. Also, big number of infantry here are pushing, trying to kill this uh, leader. And I am trying to run away. He was able to kill the 37 millimeter here, but I was able to destroy the M3S, one of them at least. Let's see this hunt. <laughs> Man, these troops are fast. They are hunting the leader. I'm trying to save it as much as I can. I'm pushing more pioneers. I'm trying to cut the road here, or cut the forest basically, to be behind his uh, advancing units. And I'm going to put my uh, pioneers here, trying to kill these units. That's why now I started to pull this uh, leader to the side. The B40N here uh, is targeting the Maxim and trying to kill uh, my units here. He is advancing more troops, but the tank, the Saniki, was able to destroy them. He now deployed large number of infantry in the middle. Also, uh, two or three uh, off-map artillery. Somehow, he was able to manage to regain control of some of the flags, but still, not enough. Okay, his units now are totally surrounded, and the leader is safe. So it's gonna be a massacre now from the back and from the front. And now we are starting to push the Mustad troops. So now fighting is in all fronts. In the south is trying to make a push. On the center, Operation Z has his unit trapped in an encirclement which is not good and in the north I'm trying to hold against this large number of infantry The X7B didn't do much damage. Finally, we are able to kill the infantry here and the leader joins back his troops. Pushing two more pioneers and mustads. The biggest spam infantry.
So let's see how things goes. Another B40 incoming. And there is an SU-76 trying to uh, advance. Okay, he puts another off-map artillery here trying to clear the units in this side. And I am targeting this uh, Roskaya troops. In the center, finally I am able to push and take that flag again. 16 flag to 8. In the south he's still trying to push, but with no luck. On the north, he applied an off-map artillery, which is gonna cause lots of damage to my troops. He finally lost one of the uh, uh, his fighter bombers here, the B-40N. Trying to target the Air 2, but with no luck. He will lose the Act 3 now. He went inside the anti-air umbrella and he lost his Yak 3. Here, uh, he's trying to target this 37 millimeter, and I actually anticipated that because of the line of the uh, map. But then I, I uh, pushed this BA-20, trying to hold. However, large concentrated infantry here are being pushed. Two BT-7s here trying to clear this area. He's trying to do a push from the south now. So I decided to push in SU-76. In the center things are going well. And in the north, big bush is coming from Operation Z. This BA-20 was able to uh, suppress these units along with the 37mm. He still has one anti-air here. So the X7 better uh, withdraw. Okay, I, I fell uh, in an ambush here by the Zest 257mm, which was one of the best anti-tanks in the Soviet divisions. But it was under strength, so it died. Okay, we were able to destroy one of the BT-7s using the AX-7B in this side. 13 flag to 11, he was able to get the, that flag, but no, not much time, 20 seconds. He needs to have one more flag now, but seems that is not happening any soon. 10 seconds. So, it looks like this battle is lost for Operation Z. He did good though. Okay, let's have a look here. I had 1675 kills and he had 1240 kills. Okay, uh, let's have a look to the kills. So the infantry did good job here, uh, especially in the middle or in the center. This T-70 Rasvitka was able to kill the BT-7. They are a match. However, the T-70 Rasvitka was able also to kill one of the M-3S, which is impressive. The SU-76 was, was able to counter the attack from the M-3S and kill also one Z-2, which was under strength already. The anti-air did good by destroying Yak-3 and B-40N. However, he had large number of spammed uh, lanes, but uh, we were able to counter it somehow. The losses 
Okay, some losses due to the uh, Sabiris. And mostly because of the B40N we lost a lot. So this was the hero of Operation Z game. The B40N did lots of work. Another B40N. And all, of course that off-map artillery uh, helped a little uh, in trying to regain control in the north. This BT-7 also destroyed some units. Other than this, it looked uh, pretty standard. Uh, and I think this was a good game to showcase the 7th ST, which, as I said, one of the most spammy division in Steel Division 2. Uh, but some people find this uh, fun to, to play uh, with. So, yeah, I hope that everyone enjoyed this game and see you in future games.